Windy.com presents a lot of weather data in an easy to understand form. It displays digital data enhanced with sim simple graphs and highlighting to supplement a weather map. However, there's so much information available, this quick guide may help you find your way around the menus. When you first open Windy.com, if you've been there before, you'll see the last place you were interested in displayed in this dialog box in the top left hand corner. But if you click there, you can choose from a list of previously visited places, or you can search for another location. Alternatively, you can drag the map and click on a location that you're interested in. Once you've selected the location, the down in the bottom of the screen, you can see the weather forecast for that area is displayed. You can see the grey areas along this timeline showing night and day. The cloud icons show rainfall and sunshine, and, as you would expect. And then there's a display of the temperature forecast along this row here. But behind that, you can see there's a green watermarked graph of the temperature. Uh, showing the high points throughout the course of the following days. Below that, the precipitation is shown in rain, which is expressed in millimetres, or you can see figures showing centimetre figures, which is for snowfall. And you can see that corresponds to the snowflake icons in the clouds above. Then below that is the wind uh, speeds displayed here in miles per hour. And you notice that the, the rainbow highlighting uh, shows the peak values of wind speed and in the row below it's showing the gust values of wind speed. <coughs> so the highlighting here in colour makes it quite easy to spot the peaks and troughs in the wind terms. And below that there are wind direction arrows. On the very bottom line of the screen um, you can choose between uh, this basic forecast or the meteogram, uh, which expands the precipitation and cloud information. But we'll come back to that later. Um, again, on the bottom row, you can see the different weather models are displayed here. Um, the ECMWF model is the default, but you can choose other models. And this probably explains why you find that you get different weather forecasts on different websites, because they're using different models. Way over on the right hand side here you can see a list of nearby weather stations and the current uh, climate situation there. You can actually drag this whole bar to the right and reveal uh, webcams in the vicinity. Okay, let's put that back where it was. Um, up in the top right hand corner here you can see there's the option to log in. It's a free login, <coughs> you just provide an email address but that will allow the system to remember your preference. There's a, a menu down the side here showing different layers that you can select. At the moment we're showing rain and snow, but we could switch that over and display temperature. If we close the weather forecast bar at the bottom of the screen with the cross here, you'll see that it changes to show a play button, and by clicking that we can animate the forecast so that the weather chart will change to reflect the forecasted weather. Over on the bottom right hand corner you can see some quick options here which allow you to select uh, different places, uh, changing the display to wind for example, uh, picking out airports. There's, there's an opportunity to change the weather model here and also a key to the colour code used in the chart. The amber arrow on the uh, place of interest closes the animation and returns to the forecast. Alternatively, if you were to click the cross there, it simply uh, takes you back to the opportunity to choose a new location to be considered. I mentioned earlier the uh, meteogram forecast down at the bottom here, where you can change from basic to meteogram. And as you can see, that expands the uh, precipitation section of the chart. So on this row here, you're showing uh, atmospheric pressure. And if you look very closely,
closely, there's a faint line which graphs that atmospheric pressure over the period of time. These uh, cloud symbols or graphics show cloud uh, density at different altitude um, at different times in the day. <coughs> so here you can see, uh, for example, just very light, low cloud. And here you can see quite dense cloud at quite a high altitude. The altitude figures are shown very faintly in this area here. If I zoom in a little bit so we can see that better, I think you can see that the uh, altitude is labelled in three columns here. Uh, the most obvious one being this one, which shows it in metres and kilometres, up to nine kilometres altitude. Um, the right-hand column uh, expresses altitude in feet, uh, 3,000 feet. Uh, 6,400 feet, and then goes on to flight levels. Um, these are abbreviations, like FL300 is an abbreviation of flight level 30,000 feet. Uh, and then on the left, there are another expression of altitude in barometric pressure. Obviously, pressure is higher at low altitude than at, than at high altitude. <coughs> the gray areas indicate uh, cloud density. So uh, for example, here you can see we've got a very dense cloud at low altitude, um, where, and here the cloud builds to a very tall stack of cloud. Over here you've got a medium density cloud only at very high altitudes. Um, it also displays uh, rain, convective rain, and snow as a stacked bar graph here along the bottom. Um, you can see the uh, purple blue stacked figures here. Um, rain is expressed in millimetres and snow in centimetres. And you can see that snow figure of two centimetres corresponds with the snow icons on the uh, little cloud images here. Finally, the bottom row of this display shows the cloud base in feet. OK, I think that concludes this quick roundup of what um, windy.com can do, and I hope you enjoy exploring it further.